LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, liftoff conditions looking pretty good. ESTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Liftoff. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. Go Falcon, go GPS. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one chamber pressures are nominal. T plus 36 seconds. We're throttled back up to full power. We're out of the throttle bucket and we're supersonic. And back engine chill has started. That call out says the bleed valve on second stage engine is open. And that's beginning a final chill of the MVAC engine prior to second stage ignition. And we've got three events coming up in quick succession. We're gonna have main engine cutoff. The first and second stages will then separate and then we will have ignition of the second stage engine to propel Falcon 9 into the first parking orbit. The atmospheric density is decreasing, and that's resulting max on less Q. loads on the Falcon 9. And you've heard the call out, we're through max Q, so the loads are now decreasing on the launch vehicle. Coming up on main engine cutoff. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And we've got, as you can hear the cheering in the background, successful stage separation. Second stage is now under power of the single Merlin vacuum engine. You may have noticed some curved pieces uh, of metal come off the end of the nozzle right after ignition. That's normal. These are ground Those handling are tubes. Following nominal trajectories. They're not needed in flight. We hear the call out. We're following nominal trajectory. Coming up next, fairing separation. Acquisition of signal, Po Monkey. Fairing separation confirmed. A nice view from the second stage camera. Showing successful fairing deploy as Falcon 9 is passing through 110 kilometers altitude. Now we will be attempting to retrieve these new fairing halves with the help of our contracted recovery vessel, HOS Briarwood. Now currently Falcon 9 second stage heading northeast along the U.S. coast. And we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns for satellite deployment. You can see from the live views on your right, the second stage MVAC engine is burning. And there on your left is a live view of the Falcon 9 first stage as it's preparing to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Seco one. Great uh, live look at that Falcon 9 first stage there as it's coasting back down. Now, the Falcon 9 supporting today's mission will perform this entry burn for the second time, and both fairing halves will re-enter for the first time. This booster previously supported the November 2020 GPS-3 mission, and we're pretty excited to watch today's landing because it marks the first mission we're supporting for the U.S. Space Force with a flight-proven booster. Now, entry burn will start in just a few seconds here. Listen for the call out. Stage one, flight termination system is safe. Stage one, entry burn has started. You heard the call out and you can see on your screen, stage one entry burn has started. This burn lasts about 30 seconds. Stage 
stage one entry burn shut down. We did have a successful stage one entry burn there. And now while Falcon 9 Both makes- vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. While Falcon 9 makes its way back to Earth, you may notice that there are different soot markings, soot markings on the outer covering of the rocket. The soot is generated when the carbon-based rocket-grade kerosene, or RP-1, burns. And since our re-entry occurs engines first, the booster flies through its own plume, which deposits the soot on the rocket there. Landing burn has started. can see that stage one entry burn, landing burn. <laughs> There's the first stage coming in. Landing legs are deployed. Nominal parking orbit. What a beautiful view of that first stage landing, and we did get a confirmation from our second stage of a nominal orbit. You can hear the cheering in the background, everyone's really excited. Second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. Coasting in this orbit will last about 53 minutes, and then we'll relight that MVAC engine for a second time shortly after at T plus one hour and two minutes. We'll see you back Acquisition here at signal, Newfoundland. one hour and three minutes. Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying GPS-3 space vehicle number five. We're approaching the second burn of the MVAC engine and that will carry Falcon 9 and GPS to the orbit needed to deploy the satellite. MVAC ignition. We've got ignition of the second stage engine. Niobium nozzle starting to glow red hot as normal. And this is gonna change the orbit from a 400 kilometer apogee to one with a 20,000 kilometer apogee. Throttling down the engine, preparing for shutdown. And back shutdown. Okay, we've got shutdown. We're waiting to hear from the guidance officer. Now currently we're getting data through Tasmania so it's gonna take us about 25 minutes. Satellite separation will then occur at approximately T plus one hour and 29 minutes. Now, and we'll see you back here at T plus one hour and 28 minutes for satellite separation. Welcome back to our launch coverage for the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 5 mission for the US Space Force. And let's listen in to hear that call out and watch for GPS-3 separation from our second stage here in just a few seconds. A load separation confirmed. You can see in that beautiful video and heard the confirmation that we did have a successful payload deployment there. And for those watching, you are witnessing a successful deployment of the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 5. And with that successful deployment, that now brings our webcast to a close. Uh, great views from the camera on the second stage of Falcon 9 as we watch GPS-3, number five, heading away from the vehicle. It's on its way to do its mission. I'd like to thank you. We'd like to thank the US Space Force for entrusting us with today's GPS-3 Space Vehicle 5 mission. SpaceX is one of two certified providers for national security space launch missions, and we're proud to be able to offer reliable, cost-effective launch services to the U.S. Space Force. And we would also like to wish all the dads out there a happy Father's Day. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great weekend.